Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. How are you? I missed you guys. It's been, uh, we, we took a week off. It felt like a really long time over the break. I hope that you had a fantastic holiday season. I hope that you got to connect with some family. I hope that you got to have some fun. Uh, my wife and I just got back, and, and kids, we just got back from uh, going away to a, a little cabin for a couple of days just to stop and unplug and, and pray and connect with one another and set some goals for one another. And, and sometimes I can be a little defeatist uh, and not want to set goals because of, of past failures and, and not achieving them. I thought it was a, a lovely little twist of, of irony that I saw the, the owner of the gym that I attend show up this morning. Thanks a lot for that. Had a goal last year that I would, uh, I would, I would lose 40 pounds. Four. Four of them are gone. What I, what I discovered, oh yeah, yeah, that is not something to clap for. That really isn't. I love you guys, and I like the claps, but that is not one of them. Um, I failed miserably on that. And, and there are some other things as we were reflecting that, that I didn't fail on, which is, is kind of exciting. But when you, when you don't achieve a goal, you, you kind of feel like you've let yourself down. You, you, how many of you have goals that you have set, if you're honest, almost every year and not achieve them? How many of you just... Just the truthful ones. Good. I, uh, but but after, after spending a little bit of time on it, I, I actually remember how much Larry Bird and I have in common. Uh, we both rocked amazing mullets in the 80s. We did. Uh, Larry and I, yeah, we did. Mm, Larry. Uh, also, Larry and I today both rock amazing double chins. Uh, that is something that we can really pull off. There is a, there is a reason that I've, I've, I wear this beard. Um, also, we both absolutely believe in goal setting. Uh, and, and I love how he puts it. Larry says, a winner is someone who reckon, recognizes his God-given talents, works his tail off to develop them into skills and then uses these skills to accomplish his goals. I love that. So never stop setting goals. Not if you want to be a winner. And I do, Larry Bird. I do. <laughs> so how many of you are with me this year on some, setting some goals? Okay. And the rest of you continue to underachieve. Oh, was that hurtful? Forgive me. You have to. We're in church. I want to look ahead this year at setting some goals. And I thought as a result of that, that we would actually uh, maybe start a series with, uh, we're starting a series today called Awakening, which is about connecting with the supernatural. And we thought that perhaps if you want to set some goals that really matter, you should hear from somebody who really matters. You should probably get your goals from God, which means that you should actually probably be able to hear from God. You know, there, there was this man who was kind of taking it easy, and, and he went away to Mexico. He was sitting on the beach in Mexico, and he was, he was enjoying the sun as it was pouring on him, and he was looking up into the sky, and he was, he was seeing all the clouds, and the clouds had sort of different shapes, and he got all philosophical, and he said, God... What is a, a million years like to you? God said, he felt, felt God impress on him. He said, a million years is like a minute to me. And he thought some more and he said, God, what is a million dollars like to you? He felt like God really impressed on him. A million dollars is just like a penny to me. And the guy paused for a moment. He's like, God, can I have a penny? felt God speak back to him, yes, in a minute. <laughs> now, the cool thing about the Christian faith is that it is based on us actually believing that we hear from God, that the God that we love and that we serve actually wants to speak to us. Um, and it's, it's kind of cool, it's kind of exciting, because the, the basic cl 
claims of Christianity all center around this one thing. And if you read in the Bible over and over again, it says little things like, and God said, and God said. And we begin to get to the point where it's like, oh, maybe God actually speaks. Pretty soon you get the idea that he wants to speak to his people because God is actually interested. It's crazy, but he's interested in a relationship with you. And in order for it to actually be a relationship, there needs to be some give and take. There needs to be communication where I hear him, he hears me, and we communicate. Now, nothing is more important than understanding that God wants to talk to you and communicate to you. Jesus said this in Luke 8. He said, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. But sometimes we don't hear. And sometimes we don't understand. And it's frustrating. And sometimes God seems quiet. And sometimes we're not sure that we've ever even really heard him. And sometimes, to be honest, guys, I'm in the dark just as much as anybody else. I'm coming through a season of that right now. And although there are times in my life when absolutely, without a doubt, I absolutely know that I have heard from God, it's kind of like picking up the phone and Jody's on the other end. I don't have to say, who is this? No, I recognize my wife's voice, and there have been times where I have absolutely recognized God's voice. And I use the word voice for lack of a better term because I'm not somebody who audibly hears God, but I just get this strong impression, like this strong unction, like God is up to something and he is communicating something to me and I'm, I'm trying to follow it as best as I can. And there are other seasons where it's just he's quiet. And what is the way that you, you figure that out? What is the, the, the way that when you figure out when it is that God is quiet and when it is that you're just not hearing? There, uh, there is no formula for it. <laughs> How many of you would love to have just gone, well, if you do this, 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 and this, then you'll hear from God? How many of you would like that? I would like it. Um, and so I'm going to try to give you a non-formula formula today. Um, but some things that you can do as a result of what it is that, that Jesus has communicated to us that may help open up communication just a little bit. Because um, sometimes God is actively speaking to us. And sometimes he is not speaking to us. Maybe sometimes he's actually causing us to dig our roots down deeper. Uh, he's doing a deeper work in us. But sometimes we just need to maybe change what it is that we're doing in order to connect with God. Because, because what it comes down to is God is not interested in giving you a, a bat line, a, a God line, where you pick up the phone and he's there ready to listen to you and he's going to speak directly to you at any given time. He's not interested in that because then the power is on us. When we go, we receive. We get it from God. That's how it works. God, I need to hear from you. Hello, God. But that would do nothing but create a little bit of pride in us, if we're honest. And he's more interested in a relationship where we're reliant on him, where it's got faith involved in it. Now, Jesus, as a result of this, says that, that you should actually want to hear from God. Why? Because hearing from God is, is sort of important. Um, I, I think it is. I mean, without hearing from God, uh, you, you don't get direction. You don't get comfort when you need comforted. You, you, you don't get any guidance. You, you don't get any, any real deep emotional healing. Um, God is a God who can do all of those things. And so we need to connect with him. And the list of reasons why it is that we should want to hear from God is huge. How many of you agree? Yeah, it's fairly important. So Jesus says, let me tell you a story. And I love it when Jesus is going to tell a story. And he, he starts off by telling this story that there was this man who went out to plant his field. And, and so the man went out to plant his field. And as he's walking along, he decides to, to reach into his bag and, and he pulls out some seed. And I don't know if, if you know how it is that they planted the fields. How many of you are getting excited right now? Yeah. Uh, uh, duck. Uh, so he plants some seed and he just broadcasts it. That's how it is that, God, that this guy plants his seed. And some of the seed, it, it, it falls in certain places. It falls in good places and it falls in not so good places depending on where it is that the seed goes. But the guy is walking out here on the path and he's just, uh, hey, if you, in case you guys didn't get this, you're just the soil. Soil doesn't reach down and grab candy. 
Besides, it's a seed. Work with me here, people. So, so he, he randomly broadcasts out the seed, and the seed falls in different places. And sometimes the birds came. I'll get there. <clears throat> But he tells this story of this guy who goes out and he throws the seed and the seed lands on a variety of different soils. And the soils are actually represent, meant to represent the attitudes of our heart. The attitudes of our heart. He says that the four soils represent different people and different attitudes. And it's not four different types of people, but it's actually four different types of attitudes inside of people where it is that the seed lands. And some of us, most of us, will be able to relate with each of these four different attitudes, um, each of these four different types. And so, sometimes we're all very open to God and willing to receive from God, but other times we're very closed. But those who are open to listen, understand. And if I want to clearly understand this story that Jesus shared can actually help us about this guy who went out and cast some seed. And he said... Uh, he, the first step, if I want to hear from God in this non-formula formula, is that I have to open my mind to God. That that's where it is that I've got to start. I've got to be receptive. I've got to be ready and willing to hear from God. I've got to be open to what it is that God might say. Uh, maybe some of you, maybe you're here for the very first time today, and I know some of you are. Man, we're just so excited that you're here. And maybe some of you are, are just new believers. You're just beginning to explore this relationship with God. Or maybe you're, you're an old believer, um, and you're in various different stages of hearing from God. But, but maybe, maybe some of you here today... Um, if I were to ask you, when was the last time that you heard from God an audible voice, maybe not an audible voice, but a really strong kind of unction, when was the last time you heard from God? There will probably be a lot of people in here who are like, I'm not sure I've ever even heard from God. I've never experienced that. Well, why is that? One of the possible reasons that you may have never experience God is because maybe you've never been open to the possibility that he might actually speak to you. Now, maybe you don't even know that it's possible that God could speak to you directly. Maybe you didn't know that. Maybe you thought that God doesn't speak to you, and so you don't, you don't even know if, you're, if you believe in all of that. That's totally fair. But we have to recognize that when we have a closed mind, that God is not going to get through. This is the first type of soil. Jesus said, some seed fell on the path. And it was trampled on. And the birds of the air came and ate it up. And those along the path, Jesus said, are like the people who hear. And then the devil comes along and he takes away the word from their hearts so they cannot believe and be saved. On every farm, in every field, at least in, in, in Israel, there's this footpath where the farmer would walk down. And, and there are a couple of things that we know about the footpath. Uh, first of all, uh, the footpath is really hardened. It's narrow as a result. It's hardened and narrow as a result of people walking on it. So it's been trampled over and over and again. So it becomes quite compact and it's really hard for it to get, for anything to get into it. And, and I think Jesus says that, that we can see that this is true with us as well. That, that there are times in our life when our attitude is hard. There are times in our life where we're a little bit narrow-minded, where we've got preconceived ideas of what it is that should be. We're unwilling to listen. We've already decided what it is that we're going to do, and so we don't want to hear from God. There are so many things that can cause us to close our minds off to God. I mean, the first one is pride, if we're honest. Pride totally closes us off from God. It causes us to have a, a closed mind when I think I don't need God. I don't need to hear from God. I don't need to, I can make that financial decision on my own. I don't really know God. I can handle this parenting issue that we're having right now on my own. I don't really need to spend any time praying. I don't, I, I, I think I can handle this, this date, this dating relationship that I'm in right now on my own. I don't really know, need God. I can handle it on my own. I can resolve this. I can solve this. I can, I can get a hold of this. I don't need God. And we recognize that that's just called pride. And pride is something that closes us off to God. And so we can't get in. And we don't hear him. Also fear 
closes us off from God. Sometimes we're afraid of what it is that might, God might say if he actually did speak to us, if it did get through. Maybe he might ask me to do something that I don't want to do. Maybe he might tell me something that is really hard to hear. Maybe he might even ask me to, to, sue, to do or say something that's going to be unpopular with my friend group. So I'm afraid, and I don't let God speak to me. I don't want to become a religious fanatic. I don't want to become kind of a weird spiritual person. That's not what it is that I'm interested in. I'm afraid that I'll, I'll lose my fun. I'm afraid that I'll lose my fulfillment in life. I'm afraid that I won't be able to do everything that I want to do when I want to do it. And so fear closes us off from hearing God. And for other people, it might be bitterness. Bitterness is another thing that gets in the way. Bitterness is, is, is whenever you've been hurt and you choose to hold on to that hurt. You choose on, to hold on to those hurtful memories over time. And, and it clo- causes us to close our minds off to God. And we start saying things like, God, why did you allow that thing to happen? Anyways, if you're such a great and loving and powerful God, why would you possibly let that thing happen in my life? How is that love? And I, I recognize in a, in a room this size, there are lots of people who have been deeply hurt, hurt in the past. And I just want to say to you, I am so sorry that you have been hurt. I, I am so sorry. And God, he understands your pain. He understands your hurt. Some of you in here, maybe you were... In your past, you were, you were abused. Maybe some of you in your past, you were, you were hurt. Maybe somebody in your past died when they shouldn't have died. Maybe you lost somebody very close to you. In this room, it's going to be filled with people who are hurt and hurting. And we're all in the same boat. And it sucks. But the problem is, when we put that hurt on God, instead of recognizing that the God who loves us actually loves us, and so he gives us a choice, that he, gets, he allows people the choice to do what it is that they want to do, when it is that it may, may, may be that thing that you are choosing to do would hurt somebody. And as a result of that, people hurt people. And then we blame God for what it is that people have done. Some of us think that God is all controlling and he is some kind of a puppet master making people dance. That is not the way it works. God is a loving God who allows people the choice and they can choose to do hurtful, harmful, awful things. And that sucks. But if he stepped in, it wouldn't be loving. It would be controlling. That's not the God who we serve. And so I want to encourage you with two things. If you've been deeply hurt, don't, don't run from God. Run to God. Don't run away from the one who can comfort you, who can care for you, who can make a difference. Turn to him in your moment of crisis. Never allow anything that a human being has done to affect your relationship with the God who absolutely loves you. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit for time. So the first thing I have to do is open my mind. The second thing that I have to do is actually open my calendar to him. I got to make time for him. I got, I got to slow down a little bit. I got, I got to be quiet. I actually have to plan it in my schedule. We schedule everything else in life, don't we? I mean, we schedule our vacations. We s- schedule our dentist appointments. We schedule date nights, homework, tur- sports tournaments. You name it, we schedule it. But a lot of people never actually schedule time with God. And so as a result of that, God just kind of gets the leftovers. And, and because we live in a hurried lifestyle, it, God gets short, 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 short changed. And we're like, God, uh, yeah, I, I want to hear from you. I absolutely want to hear from you. I got about a minute and a half. Go ahead, fire. <laughs> and as a result of that, we miss on, out on what it is that God might want to say to us. Jesus said, other seed, it fell on shallow soil with rock beneath it. And this seed began to grow, but it soon withered and died for lack of moisture. And those on the rock are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. 
They believe it for a while, but in a time of testing, they fall away. And just as the hardened path represents a hardened mind, the, the shallow, superficial soil actually represents a shallow, superficial, busy mind. In part, he's not talking, here he's not talking about soil with a bunch of rocks in it. The, 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 the land of Israel is actually uh, on like a hardened bedrock, and there's really only about three inches of topsoil at any given place inside of Israel. And so as a result of that, the seed grows down just a little bit, but it doesn't have any deep roots that it can actually drop into. And so when the sun comes out, the, these, these, these plants, they die because they don't have any deep roots. And he's saying this represents the superficial hearer who quickly just takes in the word of God whenever it is that they can fit it in. And, and it sprouts up and they're all excited about the relationship to begin with. But it doesn't last. When the heat is on, when the problems come, they wither away and they fall away. Likewise, we do this. Sometimes we hear God. We get all excited about it. We get superficially kind of moved. We react emotionally for a season. But then it just begins to peter out. And we never really give God's word, God's words, time to move and sink in and move from our head into our heart and then into our hands where we actually do something as a result of what it is that we know and feel. That there's a shift that begins to happen. Notice it says they, they, they receive the word with joy, but when they hear it, they don't have any root. In other words, they don't retain it. He's saying you can be thrilled about hearing from God without being transformed. Uh, I've seen people, and, and to be honest, I have been one of those people who, who started off great, but when they first become believers, they're excited and, and they're enthusiastic and they're full of joy, and then all of a sudden you can't see them anymore. See, our faith takes more than enthusiasm. It takes time, dedicated time, where we schedule in our relationship with God. We have to set aside some time. It's not about the amount of time. It's about the heart attitude that you're going to have with that time. Does that make sense? A decision to set aside time regularly in your calendar where you get alone with God and you let him grow the roots of faith down deep inside of you. Those who are open to listen understand and then I actually must be open to focus. And I mean really focused. We live in a distracted world where right there when I started into that new thing, your brain was already going somewhere else. Right? We have to have a time where we stop and we focus and we have to be willing to put in some dedicated time where we drop away the concerns of everyday living, the worries, the plans, the ambitions, the bills, the goals, all of these different kinds of things. We just, when our mind is full, when it is always thinking, we never give God a chance to talk because we're never silent inside of our head. And so we have to get to a place where we're willing to breathe and be silent and really focus in on his voice. Otherwise, he can't get through. In, in verse 7, he says, uh, Others' seed fell among some thorns, some weeds, which grew up with it and choked the plants. And, and this seed that fell among the thorns stands or represent those who hear the word, but as they go on their way, they're choked out by life's worries, riches, and pleasures. The soil with weeds, this, this third kind of soil that the, the, the farmer is throwing it on, it, it represents a preoccupied mind. A mind that is too busy to actually focus for a moment, stop being distracted, and, and, and rip out some of the weeds that are in our life. If we spent as much time with God talking to him about our life, we'd spend a lot less time worrying about our life. Uh, God is not playing games with you folks. He has a plan and he has a purpose for every single life in here. But this requires focus so that you can actually quiet your mind and allow room for God to speak. And in order for that to happen, you've got to remove some weeds. 
You got to remove some distract, dis, distractions. A, a thorny weed is anything that distracts me from hearing the voice of God, from taking the time to sit down and pause, be quiet, pray. God, is there anything that you want to say to your child today? And then you wait. And some days he will speak. You will feel something. There will be an unction. <laughs> and some days you won't hear anything. And that's okay because you've got something scheduled with him again tomorrow. Your relationship with God is something that needs to be focused on. And when I stop spending time with God on a, on a daily basis, when, when I don't make it a priority, um, when, when, I, when I don't focus on making intentional time to hear from him individually, to hear from him through other, other Jesus followers, um, when, when I don't make time to go to group or when I, when I don't make time to, to, to connect with my DNA partners, when I, when, I, when, I, when I don't, when I don't, when I don't, I begin to lose joy. I begin to lose peace. I begin to get distracted as to what it is that my purpose actually is. My calmness goes away. My ability to handle stress deteriorates. Those who are open to listen understand. And, and then I must be open to what it is that he actually says. See, God's, God talks to people in advance who have already decided that they're going to do what it is that, whatever it is that God asks them to do. I love the way one person, one friend of mine says it. He says, God, the answer is yes. What is the question? I love that. It's so important. Because if we're not going to be open to what it is that God is saying, then God is going to be like, why should I even say anything to you? God, for some of us, is like, no, no, we don't play a game where you get to choose whether or not you obey. You say yes ahead of time. Let's be clear on what it is that this relationship looks like. Because he loves us. Because he wants us to be a part of his grand love story that he is writing us into. But in order for that to happen, we have to understand our part. We have to understand what it is that he wants us to do. And so we have to open ourselves up to getting directions and then following through. If, if, if you want God to speak to you, if you really want it, you have to say, okay, God, I am, I'm willing to do whatever it is that you want me to do, whether I understand what it is that you're asking me to do, whether or not it makes sense to me whether I should do this or not, whether I'd like to do it or not, because I know that the right thing for me to do is whatever it is that you are asking me to do because I trust you. See, the, the fourth soil represents an open heart. It's, it's, it's a matter of, of trusting God has your best interest at heart. And so he may ask you to do something that you may not want to do. The seed on the good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word of God and retain it and by persevering produce. That it is something that we hold on to and then there's action that comes as a result of it. Or you produce a good crop. They not only hear God's word, they act on it. They write it down. They listen to it. They, they ponder on it. They wonder about it. They, they deal with it. They unpack it uh, just a little bit. See, some of you, you, you kind of expect that God's word is a little bit like this candy. And so you're in a hurry, so you grab the candy, you pop it in your mouth, you suck on it for a little while, and you're like, nah, I don't even know if I like this. Ugh, yeah. It's kind of like doesn't really have much flavor. Not really getting a lot out of this candy at all. It's kind of stale. It's a little bit tasteless, to be honest. Yeah. I'm not even sure I like it. M maybe I should pause for a moment, take a little bit of time with it, unwrap it, peel back the layers just a little bit to reveal what's actually going on underneath. And then, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, there's something else there. How many of you know a, a portly Scotsman likes a good Macintosh toffee? Mmm. 
Okay, it's a little bit gross, but I'm going to put you on pause there, word of God, for a moment while I continue with my message, which ideally is yours. If, if we might pause just a little bit, bit for a moment with the words that God gives us and unpack it just a little bit, dig deeper into a little bit, man, there are, there are so many things that will come alive to you. Um, Because here is the truth. When when you walk out of these doors today, there will be all sorts of things. You can get excited right now, but there are all sorts of things that will tempt you to be distracted away from setting aside time to spend with God, from hearing God in 2019. The moment you walk out the door, you're going to be tempted to close yourself off rather than be open. You're going to get distracted by something. You're going to want to stay in old patterns that you've already got and just let them take over. Can I encourage you this week? Can I, can I just give you one little project? How many of you, before I even ask, are all like, okay, I, I'm willing to have one project? Yeah, it was a trick question, wasn't it? Some of you are like, oh yeah, he said that already, didn't he? We talked about this. For those of you who, who are, are, are willing and raised your hand, uh, who are like, yeah, I, I'm willing to do one thing. Can I just challenge you to do one thing? No, no, that's what I mean. Just pick one thing. Pick one thing. And I don't know what it is for you, but you do. That one thing that you know you need to do. One thing that might have been on this list. One thing where you're like, oh man, yeah, I actually need to maybe join a group. They talk about it a lot at this church. Maybe I should actually do that. Or maybe you're already in a group, but you're kind of lazy with that whole DNA thing where you just two or three of you get together. Maybe you actually need to start doing that. Or maybe you're like, hey, I'm new. I'm not sure what it is that's going on. Maybe, maybe I'll hang out with Frank and Jody tonight at their house for a step one dinner. One thing. I don't know what your one thing is, but you already do. Maybe it's spending time, scheduling some time to read God. Read God's word. Let him speak to you. Where you spend 5, 10, 15 minutes where you start having a a quiet time where maybe you spend a little time unpacking the goodness that's in there and journaling maybe. I have no idea, but you already know. One thing. Imagine for a moment what your life would be like in 2019 if you heard the voice of God clearly. Just imagine what that would be like for you. Imagine the joy you would have partnering with the God of the universe. Imagine the the peace that you would have knowing that you are on the right track at any given moment. Imagine the patience that you would have when on the times when God isn't speaking or the the times when things don't seem to be going the way that they're supposed to or the way that you had planned out, but you know you've heard from God that you're on the right path. Imagine the peace that comes from that. The faith that you'd have on the days that you didn't hear from God because you know there's a track record of how faithful he's been in the past. Twenty nineteen could be a year of awakening to the supernatural God who wants to direct you, love you, encourage you. So are you going to make a step to open yourself up to it? Because those who are open to listen get an understanding from the Holy Spirit. And as a result of that, there is a fulfillment that is beyond expectations. Will you be a part of that in 2019? Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for some encouraging words and I thank you for some challenging words. Maybe, maybe there are some people in here today who have never heard God's voice. Maybe there are some people in here who are just hearing about this for the first time. And they're like, man, I'm open to this. I want to hear this. And and maybe they need to 
actually do some, some, uh, some housekeeping in their heart. Maybe they need to allow God into their heart for the very first time where they're willing to say, I am open to Jesus. God, if you are out there, make yourself known to me as best as I can. I am inviting you into my life. Make me aware of what it is that you are doing. God, I, I'm laying down uh, my preconceived ideas. I'm laying down my pride. I'm laying down my fear. I'm laying down my bitterness. And I am asking you to begin to speak into my life. That, that I believe, as best as I can, I believe that Jesus came to make a way where, where I might, he might be a bridge in order to, a, to have a relationship with God. And so I'm inviting that relationship into my life. And, and others of you, maybe you, you've been a believer for a while, but it's been a long time since you heard God's voice or you're not even sure if you ever have. Will you just get to a place where you open yourselves up to it and you put aside your insecurity, you put aside your doubt, you, you put aside your frustration from failed attempts in the past, and you open yourself up to the God who really loves you. And you set aside some time, and you do some work on your attitude, and you ask him to speak. Father God, I thank you for what it is that you're going to do this week in people as they do one step, one thing that you're asking them to do. Holy Spirit, will you just meet them there? Will you let them feel your pleasure? Will you let them feel your joy? Will you let them feel your peace? Will you let them feel you, that you are speaking to them? Father God, I thank you for what it is that you're gonna do in 2019 in us and what it is that you're gonna do through us in this community and in communities all over. We're open. We're listening. Amen.